Okay, good morning, good afternoon. Welcome everyone to this edition of the Virtual Home Buying Seminar with Michigan First Mortgage. My name is Dan Sugg and I am the Chief Mortgage Lending Officer for Michigan First Credit Union. Uh, I sit today at Evergreen uh, here in our headquarters in Lathrop Village, right behind the coffee shop if you've ever been in our building here. And I sit here with along with the rest of our team, our operations team and our branch team here to serve all the mortgage needs of our membership. Today, we are uh, really pleased to bring you a topic that we haven't covered, I don't believe before, but really how important it is to choose a lender and a realtor. So we're gonna get into that now. I will remind you that all attendees should be on mute and videos off for performance. We appreciate that. And we would love to entertain your questions in our chat box. So please, if you would select host when chatting, just in case there's anything of privacy that you didn't want to share and not everyone. Um, Zareen uh, Tori is with me today on today's call and she'll be manning the chat box and the PowerPoint. <clears throat> Thank you, Zareen. And if you would advance the slide. Zareen, can you, there you go. Okay, great. Um, Again, thank you everyone. I did introduce myself. I'm gonna lead us through our speaker introduction here in a second. And today the topic is what to look for in a lender and a realtor. We're gonna spend the bulk of our call really talking about those tips and tricks, the things that we need to know when we're looking for a lender or realtor. We don't, there's no class in this. So certainly I think hearing from our experts today and understanding the importance of, of picking a professional is gonna be really helpful. And then we're gonna spend the last five minutes or so uh, uh, thinking about the three things that each of our experts today would want us to take away. And then hopefully we'll have some time for question and answer at the end. But I rest assured that if you do have a question and you get it into the chat box, that we will definitely address it, if not on the call today, uh, sometime this afternoon and get back to that. So let's jump right into our introductions. Today, I'd like to welcome Sabrina Moss. I think Sabrina is a two-time uh, attendee to the webinar series, so welcome back, Sabrina. Sabrina hails in our Brighton office, but certainly lends all across the United States for us. Sabrina, why don't you tell a little bit about our members today and our guests on the call about what it is that you bring to Michigan First Mortgage and to our industry? Well, thank you, Dan. Thanks for even allowing me this opportunity to share some information with our members and uh, hopefully guide them and help them throughout their future process of, you know, home ownership or refinancing or whatever it may be. But um, I've been in the business for about 15 years and um, I really enjoy what I do. I love my job. I a couple things that's not in my bio that, you know, I would like to mention is um, number one, I, I, I'm a numbers nerd. I love figures. I love different scenarios. I love figuring out, you know, different options for borrowers and what's gonna work best for them and help guide them through that. Um, and in the end, you know, accomplish their goals. Um, I, beyond being a numbers nerd, I'm a problem solver. So I'm constantly, you know, solving, not that everybody has problems, but you know, I'm, I'm solving problems all the time and coming up with solutions. I, I solve problems people don't even know that they have, which are probably my most favorite ones to solve. So um, those are just a couple additional things that I do that, you know, I makes my job more enjoyable and in ways that I can, you know, help members uh, facil facilitate their dreams of home ownership. Yeah. Um, our members here at Michigan First, they're in, in my opinion, the most wonderful. Um, we have a really great team behind us all in the mortgage department and every single department. All of our teams are wonderful here at Michigan First. So if you do decide, or if you are a member, you're, I, I consider you more privileged and lucky than most. So we're happy to have you. Yeah, and as you were talking about some of those solving those challenges, every loan is like a fingerprint. There's not one that's the same. It's oh, they're so all different. Yeah, they're all different. and. I've been doing this close to 30 years now and I every day I learn something new. I'm like, wait, how did that happen? You know, kind of mm -hmm. craziness. So thanks, Sabrina. And I appreciate you joining us today. So uh, our outside guest today is Esther and Esther Williams is from uh, Keller Williams Home. And Esther is joining us today to really give us the background of what a professional realtor does and is and all those skills that they bring. But Esther, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself and your career and, and where you're at today? 
Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Esther Lagan, and I am actually a real estate agent with Keller Williams and Farmington Hills. A little bit about Keller Williams. They are actually the largest uh, real estate brokerage worldwide, but I choose Keller because of the name recognition. I chose them because they are huge on agent training and agent support. And when I started, that's what I needed. It's a great company. But a little bit about my background, I started out in the real estate industry as an investor, flipping homes, you know, and I did that for a couple of years. Then I actually processed mortgages for a small company uh, brokerage in Southfield for about three years. For the past 14 years, I've been a full-time real estate agent. Um, I do list homes, love doing that. But honestly, about 70% of my clients are buyers. So I am working hard out here, but we are still going under contract. Even my FHA buyers are going under contract. And, you know, I'm working hard, but I love what I do. I love my clients. They love me. We, you know, most of my clients that come to me as buyers are referred by past clients. So, you know, we are in, we're working hard, but we are still getting it done. Yeah, word of mouth is always the best referral, certainly. Uh, in that process. Mm -hmm. And I believe I just tried to change your name to Esther Williams. So I it's okay. <laughs> it's fine. I did catch myself after you, after you said it. I was like, oh, yeah, I just tried to change your name. So I apologize. Um, no this has too many screens in front of me here. So, I all right, well, listen, let's, let's jump right in. And we, team, we have uh, some preloaded questions that uh, we came up with for you. And hopefully we don't throw you off too much. And I'd like to just jump right in. Let's start, let's see, let's start with Sabrina today. I usually start with the guests. So I'll start with Sabrina. So Sabrina, you know, I'm thinking about, I'm a member and I'm thinking about home ownership and where to start. So when I'm looking at a lender, you know, what, what is, you know, what is a, the experiences I should be looking for to choose that lender? Well, not all lenders are the same. So um, every scenario is a little bit different. So you want to think about, you know, what you're looking for. And if you have an idea, not everybody does, but there's multiple different loan types out there. So, um, for example, we all know, you know, the FHA and the conventional, those are the basic ones. But if you're looking for something, you know, a little more specific, if you're a veteran, you're looking for a VA loan. If you're looking for, um, you know, down payment assistance, there's the MISHTA down payment assistance program. If you're looking for, you know, a USDA loan, which is like rural development, you know, which is only eligible in certain areas of the state, um, but you can also do 100% financing. If there's some like specifics that you're looking for, not all lenders are the same. Not all mortgage companies are the same. We don't all have the same products to offer. Here at Michigan First, we pretty much cover everything, um, but not, not all companies are like that. So you wanna make sure that you're looking for a lender that's able to meet your needs. Um, just for example, again, like the Mishta Down Payment Assistance Program, if that's something that you're interested in. You can't just call any mortgage company and you know they're, they don't you know, offer that product. They don't have lenders that have information that they can provide you and, and give you and answer your questions in regards to the Down Payment Assistance Program. Now, it, beyond that, you wanna make sure that the lender that you are speaking with knows everything about that type of loan that you're looking for, or can at least give you options of different loans that would be available for your specific situation. Um, you wanna make sure your lender is knowledgeable, make sure that they're speaking to you, you know, um, in terms that you can understand, make sure that they're answering all of your questions. Um, in my opinion, I think a lender should be giving you all the information up front. And then at the end saying, do you have any questions? And hopefully all the information that we're able to provide is answered all your questions that you thought you might have, or even questions that you didn't even know to ask. So that's kind of my goal. That's what I try to do. I, I like to provide all the information up front um, and ask all the questions that are the very important questions and take the time to really get to figure out what your needs are and what's gonna best suit you. Um, but when you're looking for a lender, I mean, absolutely, you should be inter interviewing them as well and asking them questions. But number one, if you're looking for something specific, make sure that you're calling around, asking questions and choose a company, preferably Michigan first, um, that you know does fit the type of loan that you, you may be specifically looking for because not all companies are the same. 
Yeah, and a lot of times the loan officer, I think, plays a big part in helping provide that information about Absolutely. a different program. So you may come in thinking you want a missed loan, but then realize, well, I, I have VA benefits. That might even be a better deal for me and fit better to what my objective is. So certainly I think, again, it isn't always about experience so much, although that helps. It really is about knowledge and programs that they offer. So be ready and do some, you know, like we all do, do some of that pre-work around your eligibilities and then and then ask an interview, like Sabrina said, you know, don't don't settle just for the first person that answers the phone at a 1-800 loan number, you know, look, look mm -hmm. around. And so much of this is built on relationships. So um, thank you, Sabrina. And so jumping over to Esther now, Esther, tell me, you know, from a realtor slant, um, is it important you choose a realtor with experience and expertise in the market that you're looking or in that target market? And tell me how that works. Yes, uh, it is, Dan. You know, buying a home is probably the largest financial investment in a person will make in their lifetime. So, and then with this hyper-competitive, fast-paced market, you know, you want to choose someone that has some expertise in your target area. You know, anybody can shoot you a list and show you a pretty house, but an experienced agent that has expertise in your market will, you know, know if the house is priced correctly, They'll know if the values are trending up or trending down. They will have called the list agent and made sure that the house was still available. And if there are any offers on the table, you know, where those offers are falling so that you know if you're going to write an offer, how you need to negotiate. You know, they, they may even call your loan officer and find out, you know, what that payment is going to look like, you know. And that is just a very minute part of the home buying process, a very small part so, you know, using an inexperienced person or a person who doesn't have expertise in your target area could cost you time, money, and possibly, you know, your dream house. Yeah, and if you think about um, just information on the property that wouldn't be readily available, like a condo development that maybe was, you know, in disrepair, and you, based on the pictures, thought it was really cool, but the agent knows that in that market that that you know that there might be a lawsuit out there or something going on in that property itself too. So, I think that makes a lot of sense. Um, and uh, so, how would we tell Esther, if you don't mind, how would we tell like wh what the best realtor is for a target market? Like, would you would you ask the advice of somebody? How would you do that? Yeah, sometimes you know people like Sabrina said you can call around and interview people you know, ask a few questions. You can also Google search people and they will have, I've Google searched a few times to make sure they will have some of the homes that you sold, the more recent homes you sold and they, you can tell if they're selling in your target area. But referrals are important. I think referrals yeah. are important. Yeah, I think, um, I think we, you know, most consumers start with trust, right? And they look for somebody yes. that's they trust that trusted somebody else for a starting point, certainly. So all great points, Esther. Thanks for sharing those. So back to Sabrina. Um, Sabrina, should my lender be requesting and reviewing all my dockets and credit up front? Like, is, I know we get this a lot, right? So we ask for all of this stuff up front and you're like, do you really need all this stuff? But talk us through why we would need that. And 100% absolutely. Yeah. Um, major red flag if you are speaking with a lender and you just give your lender verbal information and they do a quick credit pull and you know 10 minutes later you receive a pre-approval letter you should be very concerned um basic documents that should be requested initially and these are just the very basic documents w-2s pay stubs one month's worth of pay stubs um at least you know a month's worth of bank statements i always request 60 days uh, basic information. There's more than that. I always request tax returns too, but that's not always required. It's just my preference. I like to request that because if there is an issue, you can give, you know, your verbal information. We can pull credit. You know, they give you a pre-approval letter. You find your, you know, your dream home, you make your offer, and then the file starts going through the processing and underwriting. And then there could be major issues. So I do a thorough review. Everybody here at Michigan First does a thorough review. Um, if there is, I, I request tax returns a lot of times during conversation, like, you know, I'll be speaking with multiple clients, you know, I'll ask them all the questions and then I'll receive their documents and 
it paints a different picture than the verbal conversation that we had. So, you know, maybe on their tax returns, they forgot to mention the property or they forgot to mention employment or they forgot to mention that, you know, they um, pay child support, you know, or they have a garnishment on their pay stub or they forgot to mention that, you know, um, you know, they just had this huge deposit, you know, uh, and on their bank statement or there's like, uh, you know, hundreds of different scenarios, but it's very important that your lender requests the basic documentation up front, review every along with even go over your credit report with you to make sure everything on your credit report is accurate. If there are any questions um, or concerns, these are things that, you know, we can work on ahead of time. Not running into issues once you do get your um, pre-approval letter and find your, find your home and, you know, start the actual live process of obtaining a loan. Um, it's, it's major. So, if you're speaking with a lender and they don't ask for at least some sort of documentation before they issue that pre-approval letter, be very concerned. Um, it's probably, in my opinion, one of the most important parts of the process is the pre-approval process and getting that documentation that's needed up front. Um, and just another FYI, just so you know, you guys are aware, when you're going through the mortgage process, underwriters are you know, very particular about the documents that are being submitted. So just please make sure that you, know, you are submitting all pages of bank statements, even if it's blank. You know, clear copies of your driver's license. You know, don't send any documents that are redacted or you take a magic marker and like kind of black it out. That's not gonna do you any good. Just, um, and be honest, be honest with your loan officer. They're gonna ask you questions. Don't be afraid to share information. You know, I mean, we can help you through things. So it's very important to have a thorough conversation up front and get the documents requested and reviewed before that pre-approval letter is issued. It's going to save yeah. you a lot of headache in the long run. Yeah, and, and every, uh, every uh, lender today has a similar process of issuing pre-approvals. You want to make sure that that process includes a review of all your documentation because those things, while they may not slow you down in the beginning, but they will catch up with you at the end after you're committed to a property financially. So you definitely wanna get all that up. So I think that's great advice, Sabrina. And um, yeah, we all, myself included, have a perception of our scenario, right? So we think we make X and we think we have so much money in the bank, but the document may tell a different story sometimes by just pennies and those pennies can make differences. So having the proof is very important. So um, Esther, back to you. Um, should your realtor have good communication? And how about those negotiation skills? Like what kind of training do realtors go through to help us negotiate our offers? <laughs> oh, for communicating, yes, a good realtor should have communication skills. I mean, communication leads everything we do as real estate agents, you know, from explaining to explaining the home buying process to a first time home buyer or helping a seller determine how to list their property. I mean, communication is key. And what sellers and buyers have to realize is that the real estate agent you choose is an extension of you. I mean, they represent you throughout the entire process, you know, um, from the acceptance of an offer to the closing table. They represent you with the person that they're negotiating with, with the loan processor, with contractors and appraisers, inspectors, and the whole gamut, you know? So communication is key. And we have to choose realtors that have good communication skills. I mean, if they are knowledgeable and accountable and listening and kind to you, then they probably will be to others. But if they're not, uh, knowledgeable or accountable or returning your calls and things, then they probably aren't with others. And then your transaction is stuck. You know, it's the realtor who moves the transaction along to the closing table. So communication skills are key. Uh, negotiations, I feel like that's a whole, <laughs> a whole nother uh, seminar. But I think that, um, you know, for the past 14 years, I've never seen anything like this. I mean, it is so competitive out here. Um, you've got appraisal guarantees, inspections, waivers, uh, 30, 60, 90 day sellers are asking for free occupancy. For me, I think that the most important thing that a realtor can do is explain thoroughly what each one of those terms mean. You know, make sure they understand. 
you know, and then allow them to make an educated decision. You know, I like to start with some of the easier things, you know, I like to start with, you know, increasing your earnest money, you know, um, gone are the days of a thousand dollar earnest money deposit, you know, um, if you're closing costs, like 15 grand, you know, put a good earnest money down, put a $7,000 earnest money down. If everything goes clear with the inspection and everything, you know, it's just only going to go towards your closing costs. Letters from a lender go a long way. I mean, we see these properties coming back on the market all the time. Buyer financing fell out. You know, if a lender calls and says, you know, my client is like a Michigan first lender, says my client is stable. They've got all their docs in, you know, they've got the money needed to close, you know, you know, that is key. That makes the buyer strong, you know, love letters. I know people are kind of shying away from those, you know, fair housing things and right. of that nature. I try to make sure my clients, but our, our office still allow us to use them. And I was never really a fan, but these past couple years, I mean, I've seen them work over a dozen, dozen times, you know, they're working and um, I try to make sure there are no photos, you know, try to keep the demographics out of it. But sellers love to sell homes to people who are, who are going to love their homes. So, yeah, those things, um, I try to start with those things. But, you know, I have some other ideas about waiving inspections and things. But, you know, that's, like I said, could get well involved for this seminar. But, yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is making sure the client knows what they're signing up for, um, especially something like uh, appraisal gaps. I try to explain it frontwards, backwards and upside down. This is what this means, guys. And, you know, then I let them decide how hard they want to go. You know, some cities like, say, Southfield, you know, I talk about negotiation strategies on the consultation because, you know, People are giving their firstborn to get into Southfield. It's just a really tough market. So, you know, people have to know what the strategies are. And once they know what they are, I think that's key. Making sure yeah. they're understanding what the negotiations mean. Because once you sign, that's it, you know? Yeah. yeah, all your leverage is gone once you sign. So Esther, you just said something I hadn't ever, nobody's ever told me that before. And that's what I love about these series is it brings uh -oh. out all kinds of stuff. <laughs> you just said, when you choose a realtor, they're representing you to the seller. So that is who they are, they're negotiating. That's the, that's the buyer to them as you. That's kind of the perception. Yeah. So yeah, I, I think that's awesome. I never really thought about it that way before. So if you don't like your realtor, probably the seller's not gonna like them or the seller's agent's not gonna like them either. So definitely pick somebody that represents you and model matches with what you wanna get done. So well done, I love that, that point, so. Um, also, uh, let's go back to Sabrina real quick. Um, Sabrina, we talked about, you know, requiring documents up front and picking an experienced loan officer that serves the programs you need, but what other resources can, can you or a lender provide to help facilitate that goal of home ownership? You know, we, we always say here and in the industry that home ownership is a privilege, not a right. It's something you must earn. So what kind of resources do you have or do we have here that we can offer? Yeah, absolutely. So, I mean, I do this a lot. Um, not everybody, you know, is uh, able to get pre-approved at the time they would like to get a pre-approval letter. So there are things that we can do to, you know, help our clients and members um, move along that path and get them to where they need to be. Some are quicker than the than others. Um, sometimes it takes a little bit of time to get there, uh, you know, situation that we need to, you know, rectify. Um, but there are different resources that we have available that we can offer. And if your lender isn't helping you with that, you need a different lender. Um, you know, a lot of people aren't aware of, you know, the next steps that they need to take. So you do need a professional to try to help you with that sometimes. And let me be the first to tell you, we are not, um, we are not credit repair, you know, specialists or anything like that, number one, but we can help you. We can go through your credit report with you, help you understand it. Um, there are, there's information on your credit report that a lot of people don't even know about. There's phone numbers, you know, for every single company that reports on your credit report, there's numbers, ways to get, you know, into contact with them. If there's something on your credit that needs to be fixed or that isn't reporting correctly, um, you know, the, all three bureaus, uh, their contact information is on your credit, credit report, it's, uh, Experian, TransUnion and Equifax. We do have additional numbers that we can provide to you that can help you get through to them and maybe get a live person a little bit quicker because those 1-800 numbers aren't always very helpful. 
There's uh, Green Path, you know, Michigan First, First works with Green Path. Um, they're a great resource for us and uh, for our members. They, um, they will help our members at no cost to them whatsoever. Um, they, they, will, they have a, a slew of different programs that they can help you with. They can put you on the right track to like help save money so you can reach your home ownership goals. Mm -hmm. They have you know, different classes that they offer that you can take advantage of. Um, there's several different things. I mean, and just our personal referrals, just people that we know that we work with that we can personally, you know, refer you to that may be able to help you in specific situations. There's, um, documents, you know, there's, there's, there's paperwork we can give you, um, that may direct you on the right path, depending on what your scenario is. Um, you know, we're just a phone call away. Um, I tell my, my clients, my members all the time, you know, just call me if you have a question and I will find it. I'll, I'll find a way to help you, you know, it, whatever the case may be. Um, so every situation is different. You know, it's yeah. not, there's like Dan said, there's not one loan that is exactly the same. Everybody's personal situation is, you know, very unique. Them and their life and their scenario and what their goals are and everything else. Um, so there's a ton of different resources and those are just to name a few. There's a ton yeah. of different resources that we can offer up that can help you with that. But if you um, are speaking with your lender and like I said, if at that point, there's some things that you need to work on and your lender isn't offering to provide you information or guide you in the right direction, you need to talk to somebody else. And then also your lender should be following up with you to find out how things are going, you know, if there's any anything else that they can assist you with along the way and have that communication there. So, you know, don't be afraid to reach back out just because you didn't get your pre-approval letter. Reach back out if you need additional help or if you have additional questions or updates or whatever the case may be. Um, you should have that relationship with your lender, absolutely. And your lender should be providing you with um, additional resources if needed. We say we say lender for life because even when you close, there's always questions about your mortgage. Yeah, nope, even after the fact. <laughs> so I can't believe we're at the time already. It, it, every time I do this, the time flies right by. So I definitely want to move to the next part of our discussion. Um, so, you know, we ask our, our team all the time because we never get to all the points. We ask our team all the time to make sure they come up with the three takeaways that we would like to see or for our, our members to listen to. And I'll remind um, our listeners, our attendees today, please get those questions into the chat box in the next five minutes so we have a chance to address them uh, even after the call today. So let's start, you know, let's start with Sabrina. I'll let Esther finish. So Sabrina, what are the top three things you think our members should take away today? Well, you can see I'm right there. So choose a lender that's specific in your loan needs. Um, you may not know right away what your loan needs are, but um, you know you should be calling around, asking the questions, making sure your lender is knowledgeable, um, and you know communicates well, is getting back with you quickly. You know all those good things. But number one, if you're looking for something specific. Make sure you know you're choosing a lender that is very experienced, not very experienced, but at least knowledgeable in um, your specific loan needs that you know is going to benefit you. Um, choose a lender that's easy to communicate with. You know, um, one of the first things that I do when I when I speak with a potential client is I'm making sure I give them all my contact information letting them know you can call my office you can call my cell you can email me you can text me if you need an answer quickly text me or email me you know i mean i may not be able to get to the phone right away but i will call you back as soon as i can if you need an answer immediately shoot me a text um and it shouldn't be like you know my lender is only available from nine to five we work all day long seven days a week your lender should be accessible uh, you know, things happen after and before, you know, that nine to five period that need to get taken care of or you need an answer for. So you and especially on the weekends, right? Yes. And it's yeah. even, you know, like the realtors, you know, we're in constant communication with your realtor as well. Um, so, yeah, definitely choose a lender that's easy to communicate with is going to be available for you and is going to communicate with the rest of your team that you have around you. You know, it's not just the lender and, you know, their client. There's a, a lot of other people involved as well. You know, the seller's agent, the title company, the listing agent. I mean, and the list goes on. So um, definitely make sure that that is uh, 
key when you're choosing a lender. Um, and then again, make sure you're choosing a lender that thoroughly reviews everything up front. Uh, I can't say that enough. I think that is like one of the most important things. Okay, so maybe your lender's not, you know, calling you back for 24 hours. They refute everything up front. I would say, you know, that's not as big of a deal as making sure everything is reviewed up front and that that pre-approval letter that they give you is a good pre-approval letter. Um, if they're not asking for the documents, offer them up or go somewhere else. I mean, they should definitely be asking for those documents and reviewing everything. It's going to save you and not just yourself, but it's going to save you, your realtor, you know, the seller, everybody involved. It's going to save them a lot of time and headache and make the process much more enjoyable for you if uh, all the documents are received and reviewed up front and uh, all your questions are answered and you kind of know, you know, what to expect, especially if you're a first time home buyer. Um, they should also be giving you information in regards to what to expect going forward. So you're not caught off guard through the process. So I would say those are my three biggest takeaways. Um, there's a lot more, but we'll, we'll leave it at that for now. <laughs> yeah. I think we're, <laughs> we're, we're going to have to have another hour to do this. Right, exactly. So, uh, Esther, tell me from a, your standpoint, uh, what are your three takeaways for us? Yeah, like she said, they're right up here. I, I would choose a full-time, uh, go on other days of uh, part-time real estate agents. You can lose a whole house waiting for a uh, realtor to get off of work or show you a house. Uh, definitely use a realtor that has some um, expertise in your target market area. And again, you can Google search, but referrals are really the best uh, way to find a good agent that works in your target. And honestly, the housing market is so tight. You know, most people are working in most cities, you know, most full-time agents are. Uh, choose a realtor with some basic knowledge of the loan process. I think that's good because, mm -hmm. uh, you know, the relationship goes hand in hand and you should be able to ask a basic uh, interest rate, uh, calculate your payment question from your realtor as well. And personality is key and being able to be comfortable with your realtor. I mean, I honestly think that's the biggest Thing. You want to be able to ask questions and feel comfortable with your realtor. Those yeah. are my three tips. Yeah, and and that last one again, I never really thought about it that way when you framed mm -hmm. it up. So really good job on that. You know, we are uh, we are in a relationship to buy the biggest investment in your property, and we should be working together and not against each other. So really good one. All right. So uh, unfortunately, that brings us to our close today. So if I could have the next screen. So if you have questions today about this seminar, like the technology side of the seminar, just reach out to mortgage seminars at michiganfirst.com and we'll get some answers for you. If you have a need for uh, one of our loan officers, you wanna start working with them and seeing what your options are in any type of mortgage transaction, you certainly can find uh, Sabrina at her numbers down there and her email address or any of our other 42 loan officers at the website, michiganfirstmortgage.com slash mortgage. Or as a benefit for our members, you can call 24 hours a day, seven days a week at our 365 live call cell number, hit mortgage option on there or say mortgage and you'll get to somebody that will talk to you. So for Esther, her information is on the right there, uh, her phone number, her email address, and then of course her address with Keller Williams Home. So I can't thank you, Sabrina and Esther for joining us today enough. We really appreciate the topic and hopefully we'll have you back soon. And for everybody that joined today, thank you. And remember this is recorded and out on the website. So if you wanna review it later, you can. If you have a question that went unanswered, we'll get to you and hope you have a wonderful weekend and enjoy our upcoming holiday. Thank you, bye-bye. Thank you.